first in Indiana, number 54, Chris Lawson. At one guard, a six foot three inch freshman from Heltonville, Indiana, number 22, Damon Bailey. And at the other guard, a six foot junior from Freeport, Illinois, number 23, Jamal Meeks. And now let's meet the starting lineup for your Iowa State Cyclones. At one forward, a six foot five inch freshman from Chicago, Illinois, number 22, Sean Jackson. At the other forward, a six foot six inch junior from Park Forest, Illinois, number 21, Norman Brown. center for the Cyclones, a six foot nine inch senior from Detroit, Michigan, number 52, Victor Alexander. At one guard, a five foot eight inch freshman from Gary, Indiana, number five, Skip McCoy. And at the other guard, a six foot two inch junior from Palmer, number three, Brian Pearson. Okay, there you see tonight's officials, Paul Sternberger, Bill Summers, and Stanley Reynolds. Let's talk a little bit about the keys to the game tonight. First of all, the Cyclones. For Iowa State, first thing they need to do is work on their confidence. They got blown out last year, and all these players are back for both teams. They've got to believe they can win the ball game. Their field goal percentage is important. They've only won two games, but they shoot 49%, especially led by Alexander. He's over 60% from the field. And there he is, Victor Alexander. He is the guy that has to lead this. He's going to have to get 30 or 35 points today for Iowa State to win. For Indiana, they've got to watch their turnovers. 23 against Kentucky on Tuesday. A lot of foolish passes, and Iowa State loves to trap. Cutting. On offense, they've got to set up their picks by cutting precisely instead of lazily. Coach talked about this today in the practice. The better these people can cut, the easier it will be to score. And number three is blockout. Iowa State's a good offensive rebounding team. Indiana must concentrate on that, or Iowa State will get a lot of easy baskets. Laz, we have a matchup of a couple of big centers, Chris Lawson, 54, and Victor Alexander for Iowa State. Uh, statistically, how do these two compare as far as size is concerned? Well, Lawson's going to get the start. His best game last year was against Victor Alexander and Iowa State. There you see Alexander's 265 pounds. I think he's closer to about 280 whereas Lawson's probably legitimate 245, a big difference in rebounds. But last year, Lawson got uh, 14 points and 16 rebounds. It seemed like every rebound that came down, Chris Lawson was right there. He's got to be able to do that again today. All right, we're just about set to get things underway. The officials are waiting for the nod from the scoring bench. Uh, the last meeting in Ames, Iowa, there it was, Indiana victorious in 1984, December 11th, 69 to 67. Okay, just ready to get it going. Here's the toss. And the tip is controlled by the Cyclones. Backcourt, that's Skip McCoy. McCoy will take Meeks down to the right side. Back out on top, this is Brown down in the corner. Good motion already. That's Pearson bringing it out. Showing some patience in the early going, trying to set it up. 22 is Jackson, back out, Pearson. And over to McCoy. Inside, high arching shot is not going to go, tipped up. And then give that basket to Norman Brown. Offensive rebounding as Brown came in and got that. They love to go like Alexander, too. He, he was the one who took that turnaround jump shot. Iowa State put on the press. Indiana broke it quickly, and now the Hoosiers in their half court. Bailey. Anderson cutting inside is Lawson for two. I mentioned players will remember which games they play well in, and Lawson got the nod today defensively to help guard Alexander, and he's picked right up on the offense from last year's game. Skip McCoy to Brown. Brown across to Pearson. He fires off the rim. Good block out by Indiana this time. Here come the Hoosiers. Meeks. He drops it to Bailey to the glass. And it doesn't go. Anderson fights for the ball and puts it in. 
Jamal got away with one there. He was in the air and really didn't know what to do with it, but Bailey was right there to bail him out. We have a 4-2 Indiana lead early going. Jackson uses up the dribble and uses the glass for two. Near steal. Look how easily he breaks it. Drops it off. Inside. Drops it back. Cheney to the glass. Hard. Anderson again. He's up and good. Boy, Anderson is working hard inside. Lawson just did not feel comfortable with that shot, so he passed it up, and Indiana got a better one. McCoy. Pearson. Pearson averaging six and a half, almost seven points. Alexander, good cut underneath, and that's a travel. Brown faked the shot, but lifted his heel. We have an official's timeout. Uh, there's some debris on the center of the floor, and uh, the official's running over just to pick that up. We'll be set to get things underway here in just a moment. Johnny Orr in his 11th year at Iowa State. Once again, pressure. Bailey breaks it. Anderson meets good pressure by the Cyclones. Cheney from three-point range. Oh, he's right on target. Indiana a little sloppy trying to get the ball across the line, but once they did, they know which guy to go to. Calvert hits the three-point. McCoy to Brown. Nine for Indiana. And a foul as Jackson turns back to the basket. What Indiana will try to do defensively is to play behind the post players. And the players outside then will drop back off their man and help. There's uh, Coach Knight on the bench. That time Damon got a little too close. He got called for the reaching foul. First foul of the game. Brown, Pearson, Alexander doesn't go. Cheney pulls off the board. Here comes me. Bailey for three. Nope, won't go. Lawson gets a hand on the ball. Alexander chases it down. Near steal by Bailey, Jackson holds to McCoy. Pearson. Iowa State still showing some good discipline. Bump, no foul. Brown. Inside Alexander. Alexander over Lawson for an easy two. Boy, he's so big, he doesn't look real graceful out there but he gets the job done. This is a zone trap Iowa State likes to use. Indiana breaks it again. Cheney lets it fly again. This one off the mark. Chased down by Brown. It's 9-6, Indiana by three. And out of bounds, right through the hands on the deep pass to Jackson. Both of these teams like to run. Iowa State will get up the floor early. There's a good look at Johnny Orr. He's Michigan's all-time winningest coach, and he's about 15 victories away from becoming Iowa State's all-time winning with coach. Calvert Cheney for his first two-pointer. He has five. 11-6 Indiana, 16 minutes remaining in the first half. Intended for Alexander. Pearson lets it fly from three. Doesn't go. What a rebound basket by Norman Brown. Well, you can see the offensive rebounding power here. These players just fly through the air, anticipating the rebound, and then stick it right back up. That's twice now. Iowa State's got that type of rebound. Bailey, Lawson, inside, back out to Anderson. No! And that's a travel. Hard, hard to the floor goes Norman Brown, but he moved his feet. The reason and we have an official timeout, Laz. 15 and a half left to play. Indiana by three, and we'll be back after these minutes. Presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated and is intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this broadcast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference is prohibited. Indiana with the ball inbounds. It comes in. Cheney to Anderson to Meeks. Meeks drops to Bailey. Indiana working against some pressure and, and a good defense. Man-to-man -man defense now. First time we've seen Iowa State in that today. Cheney from outside. Oh, right on the money. Cheney has been red hot lately. He's averaging 23 points a game in his last five games while shooting 67% from the field. McCoy and Brown back. Now Brown goes under. McCoy 
reverses to Pearson. Pearson has Brown all alone. It's short, and the rebound to Lawson. Here comes Indiana quickly. Neeks penetrates, looks, drops to Lawson. Two on the way, it's good. Iowa State's falling back into the red area to try to stop Indiana's inside game. They're leaving players wide open for outside shots. Indiana by seven, and we have an offensive foul inside. Call that on Sean Jackson, his first. Jamal Meeks with a good position inside. Let's watch to the upper right of your screen. 23, here he comes. He sets himself well before the Cyclone leaves the floor, and that's going to go against Jackson. Good position by Jamal. Brown goes out, and Paul Dorfield, a 6'7 senior from Davenport, checks in. Here comes Meeks breaking the zone trap, knocked out into the hands of Alexander. Here comes Jackson, slows it up. Pearson, good pressure by Indiana, a little help from Cheney as Anderson followed Pearson over. Pearson lets three go, no. Rebound, Lawson taken out of his hands, and a travel. Those are the rebounds Lawson's got to get. Johnny Orr does not agree with that call. But as Iowa State came up with it, a little shuffle of the feet caused a turnover. Again, three-quarter court trap now, and he hasn't been able to break it effectively up till now. We have 14 minutes left to play in the first half. Lawson, oh, he has Bailey on the baseline. Look at this move. To Cheney. That was not a shot. It was a pass to Calvert Cheney. Well, it looked like a pass. It might have been a shot. I'm not sure. Only Damon would know for sure. Steal by Damon. And the lead. Hand on top of the ball, but it's a turnover. Damon with a good steal there. He got a little high dribble there and had to turn it over. Coach Knight giving the referee a little help there, but not to change the call. Justice Thigpen, number 24, in the lineup for the Cyclones. He replaces McCoy. And let's see what Iowa State can employ here. 17-8, Indiana's lead is nine. This is Thigpen. Thigpen will fly from inside two-point area, up over the back, and Alexander has committed his first foul. Good blockout position that time by Chris Lawson. Well, you can see the size that, that he has, Alexander has. Look at that chest there and those shoulders. Lawson did a nice job to block out, but even so, Alexander went right over the top of him, but did get called for the foul. Bailey once again breaks, uh, breaks the press. Anderson, here's the point, Meeks. Bailey on the wing, Lawson. Three, no, he's on the line. It's not gonna go. And we have a push-off foul against Calvert Cheney. His first going for that loose ball on the, on the baseline. You see those long shots. A lot of times will rebound long also. Calvert had a good chance to get that one, but that lower, that right arm on the lower back of the, of the offense hurt him that time. Pearson this time to the right side, 17-8. That's the score, nearly lost by Thigpen. Alexander double, Thigpen takes it down in the paint and scores. Thigpen's a real offensive threat against North Carolina. He had 16 points off the bench. He's taken two shots already. Out of bounds to Indiana. That's a break for Indiana there. And now in play from the corner, meets as Bailey. Takes it across, right through the trap, right to the basket, and can't get it to go. Anderson fights it off the boards. Anderson goes up and pulls the foul from Victor Alexander, his second. Anderson has done a much better job, Chuck, of hanging around that basket, playing more aggressively in the last two ball games. Here he's coming up with a rebound, and he's trying to fight back in there to get a good shot, a shot fake. There's the bump right there with the body. Alexander picks up his second foul in less than a minute. Now, Eric just can't get that first one to fall. Let's watch from a different angle now. Now watch the lower body here. Right there's the bump. On the arm, it didn't look like he hit him. The second, one for two. Anderson has five. He averages nearly 11. And we have 12 and a half minutes left in the first half. Alexander shoots it up over Lawson. 
The rebound pulled out by Indiana. Meeks lost it. Bailey picked it up. Cheney, good cut by Eric. And the foul is on Dorfield, his first. Indiana's following the practice they had at Kentucky. A little concerned look there by Johnny Orr. Indiana went to the free throw line 44 times against Kentucky and have had five of the Kentucky players foul out. There's a nice cut. We talked about that earlier. Anderson sees the opening, makes the cut, and then goes right up to the hoop. Indiana made 33 of those free throws at 75%. But that's a real key. If Indiana can get to the line a lot, number one, it gives them a good chance to score. And number two, it's creating a lot of defensive pressure for, uh, for Iowa State and some foul problems. Two new guards for Indiana, and uh, that will be Jones and Greg Graham. And Pat Graham is also in. He replaces Anders. So we have both the Grahams, Pat and Greg, and Lyndon Jones in the lineup. Pearson guarded by Jones. Big pin, whistle, away from the ball, we have a foul, and it will go against Indiana. I think that's Cheney again, his second, trying to prevent the cut coming inside, and he gets called for the foul, that's two on Calvin. Still a common foul, 2010 Indiana, 12 minutes, four seconds left to play in the first half. Alexander tries to fight his way through, Lawson cuts off his move, so the Cyclones have to bring around on top. Outside, he can hit from there, and does. Victor he, Alexander. He prefers to stay on the block, but Indiana's guarding very well down there, so he's going to have to roam out a little more. That time to the free throw line. Kind of an unorthodox shot, but he makes it good. We have an official's timeout. It's 2012 Indiana back after these messages from your local station. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Indiana leads 20 to 10. And let's take a look at Iowa State season results. They were out in Maui, of course, with Indiana at Thanksgiving. They were one of, uh, won one of three games out there. Syracuse beat them, Santa Clara beat them. They went to Charlotte for another tournament, lost two games down there. And they've played 10 games, only two at home. They've also played three Big Ten teams, Minnesota, Iowa, and they finally got a win last Saturday against Michigan here in Ames. So this is only their third home game, Chuck. And that's, uh, that's difficult for a team to play all those games on the road. Well, their 2-8 and eight record does not belie their ability. Inside and a turnover. A little head fake and a ball fake, but uh, apparently Greg Graham moved his foot and the official called the violation. Indiana by 8, 2012, 11 and a half minutes left to play. Dorfield drops it back to Pearson. Pearson to Alexander. He shuffled his feet, no call. That bounces out. Knocked out of bounds, and it'll be Cyclone ball. Turnover's Indiana's advantage, 6-3 to three now, but that block out has hurt Indiana again there. They're out of position. Iowa State's able to keep that ball alive and get another chance to score. Thigpen from a long two. Justice Thigpen, he has four. He was all Big 8 uh, freshman last year. Another near steal now, back to Indiana. And right in front of us, as a matter of fact. There's Johnny Orr. The inbounds, Graham to Jones. They play a very close man. They do. The they play there. zone a lot, a trap. But uh, we've seen twice now, man to man. And they stick right with you. Out of bounds, Indiana. Maybe one too many passes, huh? I don't know. Well, it's difficult, Chuck. The, the first thing a team that switches up defense, the, the problems they cause is you have to realize what defense they're in. And I think Indiana's had a little trouble with that today. Matt Nover back at the line, does not shoot. Greg Graham looking, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Greg looking, five seconds. Jones puts it up. And doesn't get, gets his own rebound. 
inside, goes up again. That is just tenacity. Well, he never did give up. He just had to take a hurried shot the first time, but followed up for two. Pearson takes it deep, backs it out to Dorfield, to Thigpen. Good 20. pressure defense now. And Whistle it, throws it away. That's exactly what Indiana needed. That pressure defense causes the turnover. That's eight now unofficially for Iowa State. Damon Bailey checks back in for Pat Graham. Graham from inside. Oh, what a great cut up off the help side of the floor by Greg Graham. Greg still has not started the ball game, although he's third in the team in scoring at just, uh, just over 10 points a game. Big pin outside, picked up by Graham. Dorfield just works his right, right through the traffic, picks it up, misses the basket. Goes up again and scores. Two offensive rebounds by Dorfield that time and led to that easy basket. Here's a steal. Pearson takes it right to the hoop for two. Iowa State right back in this game. 24-18. Boy, you can hear that crowd. It's a sellout crowd, although there are some empty seats because of the students on vacation, but this crowd is coming to life. Graham, Nover, to Jones. And the steal. Pearson for three, no rebound this time. Well, Pearson's a great three-point shooter, although he has not connected today. And a nice drop off on the baseline to Matt Nover from Greg Graham. That's a big basket for Indiana. The momentum was starting to turn, and Indiana got a nice fast break and easy basket. 26-18, Hoosiers back to an eight-point lead. Alexander, he really fires it inside. There's a foul, and the basket will count. That's Doug Collins, he's only six foot one but he plays the forward position. He's left-handed, and he's very strong inside. You saw him make the steal at one end and then come right down offensively. Watch him post up inside. That's Damon. He's going from side to side, and the big guy Alexander makes the assist, and the 6-1 Collins is the one that gets the basket. Now a chance for three. Dorfield is out. And let's check to see who's in Mike, uh, Mark Chapel, a Broad Ripple product. He's from Indianapolis. Uh, sees his first action. As Doug Collins, a 6'1 senior from Springfield, Illinois, makes it a three point play. 26 21, a five point game, and these Cyclones are back in it. Here's Chris Reynolds seeing his first action. Cheney back in. That's short. Under to Anderson, up for two. Anderson's really working hard inside. Another rebound basket for Eric. Chapel gets it up. Collins, good wheeling motion. The basket will count the foul as the help was a little bit late in getting over. Is on Eric Anderson. Now Lawson got a, a, a blow there out of the ball game. Nover's in. Let's watch the defense now. Alexander comes to set the pick, and Nover does not react quickly enough. Alexander goes right up in on Anderson. He gets the basket, and that brings Lawson back in the ball game for defense on Alexander. That's the fifth foul against Indiana. And the big fella, 6'9", the senior from Detroit, Denby, misses the free throw. Collins pulls it away. Drops it to McCoy. No. And Indiana has two red jerseys over there to pull it away. Graham, a little out of position when he takes that shot. Now, too quick, only one pass that time by Indiana and an off-balance shot. Chapel. Brown looks inside. There it goes inside. Hey, Victor Alexander for his eighth point. Now he's getting his confidence now. He started slowly. 
but he's coming on right now. Indiana stuck on that 28 figure. It's 28-25. The Hoosiers looking to get back into the rhythm of their offense. Calvert Cheney goaltending as Cheney is credited for his 11th point. Indiana likes to look to Cheney when things are slowing down. Now another timeout. Seven minutes remaining. Indiana 30, Iowa State 25. Back after these messages. High energy play of the game. Amex is making a contribution to the Indiana University Library Fund. Well, last 30-25. Indiana led by as many as nine. How did they get back into this game? Well, Iowa State's made a great run here offensively. They're still crashing the boards. They seem to be getting a little more confidence. They, they were a little shy at first, but now they're right back on it. And Indiana's hurrying their offense too much. They're taking one or two passes, taking an off-balance shot instead of taking their time and uh, making that good shot. Make the de defense play a little bit. Make the opposing team play a little more defense. Skip McCoy, Sean Jackson, Norman Brown. Brown is doubled as he gets down on the baseline. Indiana with good pressure and knocked out of bounds. Uh, great effort there by Eric Anderson. Now you can see the coach talked about defensive pressure in that last timeout. Everybody's extending the defense. Good shooting by both teams. Indiana's 54%. Iowa State now with a slow start back up to 48%. McCoy gets it to Chapel. Chapel guarded by Graham. McCoy down to Alexander. Good motion with the ball. No place to go. Good double as Brown found himself trapped outside. Oh, look at that slam dunk on the rebound. That's Norman Brown, six foot six, 190 pounds. And they crashed those boards. That time he went right back with it and jammed it. Reynolds drops to Lawson. Oh, he is right on target. Chris Lawson has a great shot, and that baseline is one of his favorites. Second time he's made that shot. Again, only one pass, though. Victor Alexander uncontested. Now, Alexander's been working harder inside to get that ball, and now that he's got it, he just quickly turns and scores a lead down to three now. 32-29. Bailey tries to get some room. Back to Reynolds. Graham back to Bailey in the paint. Up finger roll, it goes. Damon very active without the ball. Knew that the team was counting on him to create something. And he was able to do it that time with Cheney out of the ball game now. With a rest, Damon's got to pick up some of that offense for Indiana. Jackson takes Anderson down to the line, tipped away, back to Alexander. No foul, yes, a foul. Watch inside, Alexander picks up the loose ball without a dribble, goes right back up. Lawson draws the foul. That's the first on Lawson. Substitution, McCoy is back in. He replaces uh, Jackson, Brown is out. Take that uh, back, uh, Collins is out. Alexander really in pretty good shape. This game's been up and down the floor and he's done well. As far as his win, you see him shooting 69%. He's on a record pace for Iowa State, although Johnny Orr's a little concerned about his free throw shooting. He got 26 points and 12 rebounds against Michigan last Saturday. His season high is 31 against Northern Iowa. He was 14 to 60 in that ball game, so he can shoot, although most of those shots are from close range. Up to Lawson. Lawson can't get it out, finally does to Reynolds. Anderson, and a hand in the face, and that foul goes against Iowa State. It'll be on Brown, his first. Iowa State likes to pressure on that man-to-man. -man. Lawson might have even gone up strong with that shot because Alexander's got two fouls, and he really can't draw that third one. Still 4.59 left to go in the half, but he decided to pass out. Jamal Meeks checks back in for Reynolds. Would that be a logical thing to do right now, challenge the big man inside? Well, Yes, it is, but uh, it's hard for the kids to think that way. You know, they, they want to take good shots, and they don't want to force that. And I think uh, Lawson thought he may have forced that shot, although it could have drawn that third foul. Meeks. Here he is. There's the move. It doesn't go. We have a foul backside. That's going to put... Uh, well, let's see what happens here. Who's that going to be on? 
No, that goes against Thigpen. Okay. I thought that might be on Alexander, just as we mentioned it. Lawson gets the ball, now watch, and then comes right back to the right, goes up for the shot. Yeah, right there's yep. the call. Thigpen reached in, and I, because that would have been the third on Alexander, so he can't afford to foul. He's gonna let Lawson take that shot. 34-30, Indiana. Lawson misses them both. Four minutes, 42 seconds. Iowa State has stayed in this first half. Here's the steal by Anderson, but he can't catch up to the ball. Collins beats him to it. Bailey picks up Collins. He drives and a shoulder bump. That's going to go against Bailey. And I have Damon Bailey for three. Oh, that's That's number three on Bailey. Collins is the third leading scorer on the team at 12 and a half points a game. And he's got that great drive to the basket. Got that left-handed shot in. Brown comes out with a big hand from the crowd for his rebounding early in the ball game. Dorfield is back in. He's a 6'7 senior. Also, uh, Skip McCoy's back in, number five. Pat Graham in for Indiana. And Graham replaces Bailey. It's a good look at Collins, 85% from the line, six foot one, and he plays the forward position a lot because of his great quickness. Coach Knight trying to decide what changes he can make here. Indiana now ahead by three. Deep rebound, Graham hauls it in for Indiana. Here come the Hoosiers with a three-point lead. It's up to Pat Graham. Pat drops it to Lawson, Meeks, Anderson. Looking for some room. Good defense by the Cyclones. Excellent defense. Anderson inside, knocked away. That's going to be Indiana ball. Better offense that time by Indiana. They're taking their time. They're probably not cutting as sharp as they need to be because that sure would give a few more openings if they did. Meeks went over and had a word with Bob Knight. That's not going to go. Foul. That's on Dorfield. Backing away, but he didn't have his position as Graham charged from the baseline. Graham a little off balance that time, but again, hoping that he would get the foul. Meeks gets him the ball, goes up strong, has to double pump to avoid the first foul, and then Dorfield draws it. Matt Nover will be back in for Indiana. Here he is, and uh, he replaces uh, Lossley. Checking to see, and uh, no one at the line for Indiana right now as uh, Graham has stepped away. Looks like a contact out. He's okay. over at the Indiana bench with Tim Garl, and looks like they're getting him a new contact, trying to get that put in, so there'll be a slight delay here. Did you have to wear contacts? Uh, no, and uh, it's frustrating when somebody loses one, especially when he's ready to get to the foul line. Obviously, slows play down. There you saw Alexander on the bench for a rest. Still not quite ready with that contact. Well, even though these are custom fitted, obviously, contact lenses do have to be. It's a new one, probably foreign to his eye. And uh, he'll have just a moment or two to have to blink and get it back into position again. Well, you can tell the home crowd doesn't like what's going on, but it doesn't look like Indiana will have to take a timeout. It's just an official time. And he'll come back in and take the shot. The eyelids are perspiring, and it's awfully hard to get that centered over the over the eye itself to, to get it in. And uh, you see Tim Garl. How many sets of contacts would, would they keep for players that would, would have to need them? Well, at least they have an extra set in case something would happen to the one, obviously, that he's wearing. That one's probably lost by now. And so he had to put the new pair in, at least one. Greg Graham, a 6'4 sophomore from Warren Central High School, averaging 81% from the strike, will be shooting two. Yep, first one a little bit short. Second won't go either. Dorfield with a hand on it, saves it for the Cyclones. We talked about free throw shooting for Indiana before the game last. Uh, that's uh, two in a row missed by Lawson and now by Graham. They're getting to the line a lot, but 
obviously you've got to convert those. Brown, no, that's thick pin. And all the way back to Collins. We have three and a half minutes left to play in the first half. It is a close game, 34-31, Indiana leading. McCoy, meets right on him. Collins lets it fly and scores. It's a three, and we have a tie game. Collins has really picked up the momentum here. Alexander's out of the ball game, so Iowa State needs somebody else to score, and this ball game now tied. Collins is seven for 23 from that range. Down to the line, out of bounds, Indiana. And that would have been out of bounds by Graham if he'd have caught that pass. Now another timeout. Well, we have three minutes left to play. It's 34-34. Back after these messages, this is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Thirty-four, thirty-four, back here in Iowa, Ames, Iowa, where the Cyclones have come back from a nine-point deficit to tie it up. They've done it really, Chuck, on offensive rebounding. At least five now in the first half. They've been able to put right back up for ten points, and the crowd has also helped quite a bit. Get him in the game. Deflected a pass intended for Lyndon Jones from Anderson, and Thigpen got a hand on it but couldn't save it. Last year at, at Bloomington, Iowa State got down early and never was able to come back. Obviously, the crowd there uh, rooting for Indiana, whereas here they got down early. It was 20 to 10, but they hung in there. The crowd came to life, and now it's a ball game. Meeks under to Anderson. Anderson right up to the glass. Oh, tipped in. Great hands on the ball by Matt Nover. It looked like an easy shot for Anderson, but Nova right there to get the rebound. McCoy, left side. Meeks gets a hand on it, but can't chase it down. Inside, good punch to Collins. Back out to Dorfield. He misses. No good. On the floor, picked up by Nover. And one dribble, takes it out of trouble, and then gives it to Meeks. And two more offensive rebounds there for Iowa State, but luckily for Indiana, they missed the rebound attempt. Nover goes up. No, it won't go. Last couple of games, Kentucky and here at Iowa, at Iowa State, had an awful lot of trouble missing those easy shots. Good defense by Indiana there. Indiana's had trouble with those uh, two-footers, some layups. Although that's a pretty uh, wild yeah, one there, uh, off balance, and probably shouldn't have taken that shot. Indiana, Bob Knight looking down his bench with a minute 33 seconds remaining. The Hoosiers leading 36-34. Collins. Underneath, blocked by Anderson. They're going to call a foul, however. Let's wait to see. On Anderson, his second. Now, Indiana's given up too much inside position. Dorfield really wasn't even posting up. He was just crossing the lane, and an easy pass comes into him. He turns and is able to make a good move to the basket, fouled by Anderson. Lawson is back in. He replaces Anderson. Chris Reynolds is back in, replacing Pat Graham. 36-34. Dorfield, a 69% shooter. We'll have two. Sort of cups in and out. Johnny Orr just looking down. His wife, Rami, is just out of the hospital here in Ames. We understand that she's recovering at home. We wish her the best. Dorfield lets the second fly no good. And out comes Meeks. Reynolds to the glass. Offensive foul on Chris Reynolds, and we have an injured player. Brian Pearson hard into the goal post, but he's back up. That's a two-on-one fast break. Pearson the only guy back. Here's what Pearson saw. And uh, Iowa State's Dorfield cut down the angle so that Reynolds couldn't make the return pass, but he got out of control. And that caused the foul, a player control foul, so no free throws, but out of bounds to Iowa State. Ball game, Indiana head by two, a minute 18 and left to go in the half. Norman Brown and Pearson across the line, Pearson to the left side. It's guarded by Reynolds. 
Thigpen, Collins, Collins looking in. There's the pass inside right through Pearson. Boy, that was a rifle pass. Uh, that was literally little, through him. <laughs> it looked like Johnny Ord, the look on his face, like he tried to catch it. That would have stung anybody's hands trying to come up with that pass. Reynolds, 58 seconds. Jones. Jones looking inside. There was Meek sort of lazing his way through baseline. The angle wasn't there, however. High arching shot. It falls. Matt Nover gets the bounce of the ball. Well, that fell up way short, but he gets the good roll. And Indiana has a four-point lead. Brown. They'll play for one, apparently. Big pen. Collins. Down to Dorfield. There's the cut. Dorfield. His own man gets him away. No, they call the foul on Reynolds. And they'll count the basket. Boy, there's that spin move by Dorfield. Watch this now. He comes back with the spin dribble. Reynolds is coming down to try to take the charge. Dorfield gets it to go. And the foul on Reynolds. Dorfield. Give him his second basket. And a chance to add a fifth point. It is good. Five points for Dorfield. 38-37 is the game. And Indiana, if they can get into their half-court offense, may have the last shot. First half. Out of bounds. Who's your ball? Right in front of us. It's a, a one-handed pass. I don't think Jamal got all the snap he wanted to. Out of bounds to Indiana. Reynolds. Collins guarding him. Inside, Jones will shoot. Jones misses. Tipped away. Two seconds, one second. A high, long shot will not go. We've come to the end of the first half of play, and it's been an exciting game here at the James H. Hilton Coliseum. The end of the first half, the score Indiana 38 and Iowa State 37. Tonight's game is being brought to you by INB Banking Centers, where you get and three more shots, and that is the rebounding. Look at 21 rebounds for Iowa State, 11 of those offensive rebounds. That's the big stat of the ball game because only eight turnovers for Iowa State, six for Indiana. That's excellent. Let's look at Indiana's scoring, led by Calvert Chaney again, 11 points. Anderson has nine, and Lawson and Nova with six each. A lot of inside scoring for Indiana. For Iowa State, as expected, Victor Alexander with 11 points. A strong performance by Collins. He has seven. And Brown, six. A lot of offensive rebounds for Brown. Well, how do the keys look in the first uh, uh, look that we take at them here at uh, the end of the first well, half? Iowa right? State's confidence was short at the start of the ball game. It really came on strong. Their shooting percentage is down, only 45%. But Alexander's been a big force in there with 11%. Indiana has not had trouble with the turnovers. Their cutting is not has not been very good as you look at Iowa State's keys and Indiana's blockout has not been there that's probably the biggest key of the ball game so far uh, on the bottom of the screen the blockout four offensive rebounds for Norman Brown and three for Doug Collins Collins is six foot one he's got three offensive rebounds which has led to a lot of easy baskets for Iowa State and kept him right in the ball game Indiana goes with a revised lineup to start the second half you're going to have Lyndon Jones and Jamal Meeks in the backcourt, everything else remains the same. Galbert Cheney, Eric Anderson, and Chris Lawson. Indiana's got to protect against Alexander inside. He's had a long rest now. He still has those two fouls, but they're going to try to go to him a lot. Collins is in the ball game because of the good first half he had. And Brown is in there. Somebody has got to block him out each time down the floor. Okay, set to start the second half of play, and it's going to be Indiana to toss it in. It's Cheney to Meeks. Cheney almost lost it, recovers, gets it up to Jones. Indiana leading by one, 38-37, just underway second half. Jones. Meeks, there's Cheney, double. Boy, they really put the pressure on him there. Over and back. He stepped on the line trying to retrieve that ball. And the turnover gives it back to Iowa State. So the first turnover costs Indiana a chance at the basket starting this second half of play. And now the Cyclones will have a chance to take their first lead. A small lineup in there. I mentioned Collins is only 6'1". 
playing at a forward. Brown, six foot five, but there's the big man, Alexander. And he's outside, goes down on the baseline, tries to slide through, up off the rim. Indiana draws another foul, and I think that's going to be on Cheney. Let's wait. It is. Calvert Cheney, his third. It's an interesting matchup. Collins is 6'1, 204. Going against Cheney at 6'6. He's got good strength in those legs. He was able to get that shot away and still draw the foul from Calvert, his third. See whether Indiana will make a substitution here or let their best offensive player, Cheney, stay in the lineup. That's the decision Coach Knight looks uh, like he's trying to make right now. Knight going for his 440th victory at Indiana. Collins hits them both, and Iowa State takes its first lead. 39-38. And that's got this crowd up. They want to see some defense now. Jones. Reverses to Meeks. Meeks to a cutting Cheney on the inside. Goes in. Takes the shot. No good. Lawson. Lawson goes up. I think that's on Alexander. His fourth. Boy, no, two third. big fouls third. right in a row. And Alexander knew he got him. A good offensive rebound by Lawson. Let's watch now. Shot comes out a little farther than normal. Good job by Lawson. He was a little off balance. But now Johnny Orr has a decision to make. Both teams' leading offensive players have three fouls. Chris Lawson missed his last two efforts at the line and misses this one. Well, Indiana in the first half was three of eight from the line, 37%. And now make that three out of nine as Lawson misses his first. Well, I'll tell you something, if I had the answer to why teams go hot and cold from the line, Laz, I'd make a million dollars easily. Well, you could write a book, Chuck, and I'd invest in it, <laughs> and uh, we could split that million. Boston three for four, tie game, 39. Pearson, oh, all alone for an easy stuff. Norman Brown on the feet from Alexander. Well, that's great recognition by Alexander. He wants to score, and as he turned, he got double teamed by Lawson. And Anderson knew somebody was open, makes a great unselfish play there. Iowa State back in the lead. Meeks, Meeks drives on McCoy. 39-41, Hoosiers trail by two. That's the largest deficit they've had. Meeks, Anderson, baseline. Yes, he gets it to go. Long time between baskets for Eric Anderson. Better offense there, they waited to get one of their best shooters open on the baseline. Anderson was red. Collins looking to Alexander. Pearson, McCoy. Down on the floor. Good hands by Linden. Anderson for two on the feet from me. Oh, that's a great play by Jamal. It looked like he was bringing the ball back outside to set the offense. Anderson never slowed down. Cut right under the basket. Jamal hit him with a good pass. Collins. Takes it right into traffic. Stays on the floor, blocking foul against Indiana. And I believe that's on Lawson. Yeah, that's on Lawson for moving. Collins does a great job of driving to that hoop. He's not afraid to go in there against bigger people because he can use his quickness that time drawing the foul. Common foul, the second on Lawson. That's the second on Indiana. Let's watch the battle inside. There's Alexander, he's got both hands out. Look at him leaning on uh, Lawson right there as he turns, Anderson double teams, he dishes off to Brown. Great play by the big man. All right, we're set to get things back in. Here's the inbounds play to Pearson, out to Collins. Underneath, up and in, Victor Alexander. Great feed from Collins, he just rifles that in. Alexander with good hands. Tied at 43. All alone, Lawson scores. That's a 17-footer, too. He just turned, and uh, tough for a big man to do without a dribble. Turned and got himself gathered underneath. Made a good jump shot. Pearson, back to Alexander. He's in three-point area. Double. Drops it down to the baseline. And the foul is on Anderson, his third as Norman Brown makes a quick move on the line. That brings Bobby Knight up. Indiana's not moving with their feet, they're moving their hips. As players drive by, we saw it on Brown, 
for the last foul to Lawson. Now watch Anderson, he's not moving his feet, he moves his hip, and Brown's able to get around him, and there's the foul. Well, Indiana's got both its big men in foul trouble with three. Pearson lets it fly, no good. And the rebound in the hands of McCoy as Lawson couldn't come up with it. I uh, make that Indiana 45-43. We've been tied three times. Pearson lets three fly again. This one will miss. Rebound to Jones on the long carom. Up it comes to Meeks. Eric Anderson off the glass, the block. It's a goal 10, but a foul? Yes. They're going to count that basket on the goaltending. And also the foul on Brown, who doesn't agree with that call. Again, Jamal looks like he's coming outside to set the offense. Anderson continues the fast break, and there's the foul, and Collins is the one who slapped it after it went off the backboard. So the goaltending counts the basket, and Anderson gets one shot. Johnny Orr concerned about this quick turnaround now. Dorfield and Thigpen in for the Cyclones. It's Eric Anderson will step the line and a chance for a three-point play. Hits it. Big play right here as it get, gets Indiana the five-point lead. This will be a big stretch of the ball game right here if Indiana continue to build on that lead. McCoy, Dorfield, big pin inside to Collins, back out on the line. It will high in the air, timing well. Anderson, shot did not go. Up it comes to Cheney. He pulls up, fires, scores. Good defense on one end by Indiana. A quick shot, but a good shot from their best score at the other. A seven-point lead. 50, 43. Big pin, Collins. Good feed to Dorfield. No place to go. Alexander, top of the key. That's where you want him to get the ball, way outside. Whistle, foul, it'll go against Jamal Meeks underneath. Probably preventing a cut. I was looking away from the ball at the time, did not see it. Well, now he's guarding Collins. There he is, 23. Look, he's going to post up. He plays forward. He's not afraid to post up on Jamal. With Alexander so far outside, he's trying to get it inside, and he draws the foul. Oh, great, great delay by Victor Alexander on the inbounds pass. I don't think he even knew that uh, Cheney was there. He just went right through him with that strong shot. Meeks, Jones, Anderson, I no, won't go, rebound, Dorfield, 50-45, a chance to get back to within three, maybe two. Cyclones looking, Collins drops it to Dorfield, no, knocked away by Alexander, Indiana makes the save, Jones, and out of bounds, and that knocks Jones to the floor. But it saves the ball for Indiana. We have a substitution. Nover will be in after this timeout. 50-45 Indiana back after these messages. Indiana, we have 15 and a half minutes left to play. Laz, uh, what's Iowa State doing any differently than any other team that's played Indiana so far that's causing this game to be close. Well, they're just pesky, you know. They got a big center in Alexander, and Indiana hasn't faced anybody nearly as strong as he is. And then they've got Collins, who's a small player for a forward inside. He's very quick, and he's driven inside and caused Indiana problems there. Cheney, oh, and a nice pass again from Jamal Meeks. Cheney with 15. It's 52-45, Indiana back to a seven-point lead. Indiana wearing black stripes on their left shoulder strap and uh, reverence to the death of Ralph Floyd last Saturday. Ball away, Anderson with good hands and representing uh, Indiana as an associate athletic director. is a young man that played with you many years ago. Steve Downey. Steve's here today sitting on the Indiana bench. Jones, Meeks, back to Jones. Trying to get something going. 24 seconds left on the shot clock. Meeks looking inside. Here's Anderson up off the baseline. It's not going to go. Out of bounds. A foul. That's going to be on Nover. As An Alexander just had perfect position, sort of stuck his body out a little bit and caused Nover to fall into it. 
First foul on that. That's the fifth against Indiana. Substitution, Brown is back in. The second half shooting, Indiana six of nine. Iowa State three of eight, so with three more field goals, Indiana has got the lead now at seven. McCoy works on Jones. Jones doing a good job here in the second half and gets a hand in just as I say that and picks up his first foul. That's the sixth against the team. A lot of fouls on Indiana in today's ball game, but, but they're foolish fouls. They're reaching fouls and they're nudging. We saw players move without their feet, uh, trying to get position, uh, and now they're reaching fouls from outside. Indiana's got to do a better job defensively. Ball comes into Brown. Trailing by seven, Cyclones want to get something going here. Collins up for two. No, it doesn't go. This time, Nober clears it out for Indiana out to Meeks. Jones looking. Meeks trying to set up something. Well, he's trying to direct the traffic. Coach Knight called him over at that last dead ball. Jamal came back on the floor and is really directing the traffic now. For a certain play, they want run. Inside, Nober. And that's a foul. Reaching across, McCoy has picked it up, his first. That's only the third against Iowa State here in the second half. You see, McCoy's a 5'11 guard out of Gary, Indiana, played for our good friend Jack Gaber. And Hammond Noel. Jack, of course, was a manager back at Indiana in the early 70s for some of the teams that I played on. Cheney to Anderson, inbounds. Indiana by seven, 13.40 left to play. It was a 38-37 game at halftime. Meeks, no shot there. Indiana wants to look for Cheney. They're waiting until he can come off a pick and get the ball. Down to Anderson. He goes to the glass. Good concentration by Eric Anderson. Now that's what Indiana wants. Anderson sets the pick. Cheney comes off. Uh, in Iowa State switched that, and that left Anderson open inside. That's what Indiana wants to do offensively. Throw it away. Indiana ball. Alexander just a little bit too strong with his pass intended for Brown. And Johnny Orr wants a timeout. We have 13.04 left on the clock. It's Indiana 54-45 back after these messages. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. 45, Indiana with the lead. Uh, B.J. McElroy, who is the secretary in the basketball office, and her husband Jim probably watching the game tonight from Bloomington. We understand Jim's going to have a birthday. Matt Davis says hello to you from Ames, Iowa. Pressure again by the Cyclones. Indiana working it up conveniently and easily. Barry Ganderson. Mm, bad pass, but uh, recovered by Jones. Meeks looking inside. There's Anderson. Tries to drop it inside and over. Up in the air, a foul. That will send Indiana to the line. It is concentrating on getting the ball inside offensively instead of taking those outside shots. And most of the time that's going to mean Cheney or Anderson. As Anderson got the ball, though, decided to make a pass. I think that was to Nover, but it was deflected to Calvert Cheney. He went up quickly with it, but misses the first free throw. Let's watch now. Nover can't come up with it, but Cheney's right there. Collins drawing the foul. His first. Second by Cheney for his 16th point. Johnny Orr had to take that timeout. Now the lead is 10, and that's a big lead playing against a team like Indiana. Big pen. Left side, back to Collins. Collins takes Cheney out high. That's a tough place out there. But both men can play out high. And over the shoulder, Matt Nover trying to go for the Brown. Gets into Brown himself. And is called for the foul. That's a silly foul. He's got to move his feet. Instead, he reached with his hand, being out of position, and, and drew the foul. Indiana not over the limit yet. That's only their, well, they are over the limit. That is their seventh foul. So Brown goes to the line. Iowa State with only four team fouls. Jackson is in for Thigpen. Jackson, 22. Johnny R always looks like he's worried. He's, like he's got the weight of the shoulders, the weight of the world on his shoulders. Had a little oh. delay. There was, uh, appeared to be maybe scotch tape of all things out on the floor as one of the officials was uh, jerking at it, trying to pick it up. Yeah. 
So when play resumed, there it is. See that little spot out there by one of the access ports in the floor? Norm Brown and the high rebound. Boy, how high Anderson went to pull that down. Meeks to the right side, back out to Jones. I don't believe either, John. yes, Jones has taken one shot. Anderson, uh, they wanted to go inside to Cheney. Good defense, however, closed it up. Meeks with his first shot. It's a three-pointer, and he hits nothing but net. Well, like I said, Indiana's looking to go inside, <laughs> uh, except Jamal felt that three-pointer and made it. Collins, oh, nice move by Collins to slide out and get the back, uh, the bank off the glass. Boy, he's been difficult to guard today. He's so small and quick inside. That's his 11th point. Jones down to Cheney. Look how fast he moves to Anderson. Goes up, tries to get a hand on the ball into the leg. Out of bounds. Oh, Bob Knight is up making the appeal to the official who just shakes his head. Now it looked like Calvert had knocked that ball back into the Iowa State player before his feet touched the ground. Of course, it was right in front of the Indiana bench, but that call goes to Iowa State. 58-47, Indiana's lead is 11. Collins again. Oh, good hands by Cheney. He'll drive, goes in, and is fouled. Jackson picks it up, his second. It's just being in the passing lane. And with your hands ready, the ball came right to him. And now this is difficult. He's dribbling with his offhand, his right hand, still able to get that shot away. And the foul goes on Sean Jackson. I think the one thing that Cheney has done to improve his game, most people recognize he's a left-handed shooter from the set, but he has worked very hard on putting his game on the right side. He, he can move well either way now, and then he can stop and get that shot away from going to the right or the left, too. Very dangerous offensive. Cheney's 17th point. Well, I think a lot of young people recognize that uh, you got a mindset. If you're right-handed, you have a mindset to work off your right side. I saw Coach Knight talking to Jamal. He wants him Collins fronted when Collins is posting up inside so that he can't get the ball. Substitution now for Iowa State. Pearson is in, and Pearson will replace McCoy. Thigpen also in 24. And, and he replaces Collins. He's their offensive threat, uh, along with Collins inside. This is Thigpen. And around, Brown out on top, Jackson. Now Pearson, down on the baseline. It will not go. Look at the big guy, he hustles in. Another offensive board. I don't think there's a way to stop him when he gets an offensive rebound. He's just gonna put it back up until it goes in. Indiana clears out the press. And now working its half-court game. Well, this doesn't look like a team that's two and eight. No, definitely not. Uh, they beat uh, Michigan last week, though, so their confidence up a little bit from that game. Jones had that pass right at the feet. And uh, the deflection gives the ball back to the Cyclones, who trail 60-49. Alexander gets an elbow up. Loose ball on the court. Meeks, oh, Meeks is going to take a drive. He goes solo for two. When he came out of there so quickly, he turns a loose ball into a fast break opportunity, beating everybody else down the floor. Indiana now by 13, so a good first 10 minutes of this second half for Indiana. Jackson wants to go to Alexander. Big pin, takes it into trouble. Now shoots, scores! Well, that's why he's in there. He's instant offense, not afraid to take that shot. And even though it looked like he was closely guarded, still gets two points. Meeks finds Cheney. Nover. Nover goes up, bumped off the position. No foul, brings Knight up again, but he gets the basket anyway. He was off balance on that, but made a nice soft shot off the board. Big pen on the line. It won't go. Jackson, there's a triple and jump ball. No, they call a foul. Hands on the ball, apparently some body too. Is Calvert Cheney. Nope, they call that on Anderson. Anderson has picked up his fourth. Watch the, watch Anderson now. He does not keep his hand straight in the air. See that, he's bringing his hand, his left hand comes down. I think if he'd have kept it straight in the air, he might have got the benefit of that call. That is now four 
on Anderson. Sean Jackson. 67% from the line, now improves upon that. He's three for four, 75%. Alexander is back in. Well, let's see, are they gonna let him come in? I don't think they can. There hasn't been action on the court, has there? Let's wait to see, they're gonna leave him over there on the side. They took him out and then put him right back in again, and that's a no-no. Six-five freshman from Chicago, Dunbar sends the second on its way. That won't fall, but the rebound to Dorfield. Backs it out. Over to Thigpen. Brown, Pearson. Cyclones really playing a tough game inside. And patient. Dorfield, Nover, backs him. No, tipped up and in, big basket, give it to Jackson. Well, Norman Brown came over that first rebound, and then Jackson finishes the offensive rebounding, hurting Indiana today. 64-54, fans come alive at the James Hilton Coliseum as Calvert Cheney quiets him down with his 20th point. Well, he is amazing, he feels the crowd coming back in the ball game, Makes a good cut to get open, about eight feet from the basket. Jackson, Thigpen. Alexander still waiting to get back into this game. Thigpen will shoot. He scores! <laughs> 66-56, minutes left to play. Anderson goes in. No! Out of bounds, Indiana ball. No, what do they do? They call a foul. I believe foul. it's on Dorfield. It's on Dorfield going for the loose ball. Anderson trying to create something there, but the ball gets knocked out of bounds. Dorfield picks up his third. Let's watch. A near block, but Anderson stays right with it. And you can see he grabbed the arm right there. And Anderson will not be able to go to the line. That's only 16 fouls on Iowa State. So Cheney will trigger, but uh, we have a timeout first. 7.54 left to play. Indiana with the lead, 66-56. Back after these messages. First of all, Laz. Anderson with four. Cheney and Bailey both have three, and Bailey is back in the ball game for Iowa State. Alexander and Dorfield both have three, so Alexander's really guarded against that fourth foul. The scoring leaders inside for Indiana. Cheney has 20 and Anderson 18. And as expected for Iowa State, Alexander with 17. Collins really working well inside, has 11. Alexander averages 23. Collins averages 12 and a half. So they're right on pace with their season averages. Cheney, Indiana with the ball, leading by 10. Jones, tough job inside. Bailey gets the ball off the glass, however. Difficult pass there. He was well guarded. Drops it off to Meeks. Real, uh, just a harassing defense by the Cyclones. Loose out of bounds off Indiana. Iowa State to bring it up. Bob Knight imploring the team to stay tough. Seven and a half, less than seven and a half now. 66-56. Collins. Pearson almost loses it. It back. Bump. Oh, he gets the basket. No foul. Cheney had some position there, but no call. And Alexander gets the bank shot to go. A little bump outside between Jones and Pearson. Down on the line. Look at Cheney's quick move and up to the glass. What a soft move. He gets crowded under there, and he knows just how hard to put it up. I don't think the defense thought there was enough room to take the baseline and he just really snuck his hand through there and banked it off the board. 68-58, big pen lets it fly, excellent block shot by Cheney. The lead up court to Cheney, he goes to the glass and scores, he's fouled. Big pen picks it up, and Cheney with a chance at a three-point play. Big pen likes to get that offense going, he likes to get that jump shot. Cheney came out of nowhere to block it, and then Thick pen tried to make up for his mistake with the foul. And a good roll there by Cheney. He gets a chance for a three-point play. 
24 points now for Calvert Cheney. Big pen is out, McCoy back in. McCoy replaces Pearson, and uh, number 13, Mark Chappell is in, replacing uh, Thick pen. It's Calvert, good looking. There's the black band we talked about. Memory of Ralph Floyd. 25 points for Cheney, 71-58, six and a half minutes. And it goes against Lyndon Jones as a good pick was set on on top. Jackson set the pick and McCoy used it. And Jones is called for the foul. And that'll mean some free throws for Iowa State. Sean Jackson, freshman out of Chicago, will be at the line. Indiana still trying to match up here with the substitutions. A small lineup now as Jones and Jamal are at the guards. That puts Bailey at a forward. Nover and Cheney are left inside. So Nover's really got the tough job trying to guard Alexander inside. Jackson, high arching shot for his sixth point. Johnny Orr, 20th year. I'm sorry, 11th year here, 11th year, 26th year overall. Second shot is no good. Look at Alexander, haul it away. McCoy sends three on the way, no good, Meeks. To Cheney. Oh, good recognition by Meeks and Cheney as to what needed to be done to save that ball. Three on the way. Oh, in and out. Bailey. Nover goes up. He won't get it. McCoy scores. No foul. Well, this is the kind of pace that Iowa State loves. It's up and down the floor, a lot of change of possessions. They've cut the lead to 10. No foul. Collins gets the two. And now the foul on McCoy. Iowa State loves that full court pressure. It gets the game in a frenzied state. And you can see how quickly they score out of it till that foul called against McCoy. Indiana back at the line. 71-63, Indiana's eight-point lead. But once again, Iowa State coming back in. Look at this. The triple team leads to this fast break, a one on three on nobody. Doug Collins is a 6-1 guard going in for that jam. Jamal Meeks will shoot one and one. Has only six points. That's over his average of 2.8 and improved on his field goal shooting percentage. He's taken one, hit it. And that was a three-pointer. Yeah. Big shot. Hits both free throws. He has seven. Indiana back to a 10-point lead, 73-63. Five and a half minutes left to play. We're at Ames, Iowa. Iowa State, the Cyclones really tough here. Nover blocked away. That could have been a travel. Yeah, it looked sure like he left his feet and dribbled. Can't do that. And Collins uses the glass on a low dart-like shot for his 15th point. Reynolds almost lost the ball on the pass. Inside, Cheney! He gets the bounce off the rim. Cheney has great timing. Not only know when to get open, but to know when Indiana needs a big basket. This crowd gets back in the ball game, and then Cheney quiets him down. But that timing is one thing that was lacking there for about three or four minutes for Indiana. Right? Yeah, you've got to set your cut up so that you're open when the man's ready to throw you the pass. Jackson, no, doesn't go. Look how high Meeks goes to clear it off. Up to Reynolds. Oh, he's got Cheney, and went to him too late. That's a tough pass there. He was guarded and tried to thread the bounce pass through there. Cheney not able to come up with it, and a turnover. Greg Graham will be in for Indiana now. Uh, let's check to see. He'll replace Reynolds, or who? Now he replaced Meeks. Dorfield is in. Dorfield replaces Pearson. Indiana with uh, a couple of quick guards out there, and that's uh, Little hesitation, they call the foul on Reynolds. Call on number 21, Chris Reynolds, his third personal foul, the 10th team foul on That's the 10th team foul against Indiana, and with the new uh, 
NCAA rules, 10 fouls. Automatic two shots. Mike McC or Skip McCoy, rather. First trip to the line tonight from Gary. Done a nice 11. job. He's just a freshman in the starting lineup now. Started the last couple games for Iowa State. First free throw. It's got to be tough for a coach to sit there on the sidelines, watch players shoot free throws. You have no control over it. We just hope he can make uh, a good percentage of it. One for two. Cheney. A little tip over into the hands of Reynolds. Makes the drive. Lays it off to Nober. Smart play. He didn't really have a good shot. He didn't do anything foolish with it. Just set the offense up. Good smart play by Nover. 75-65. Bailey goes up and in. What a delay by Damon Bailey. And that makes Nover's play so much more important because Indiana's able to set the offense up and then they go inside to Damon. And, and again, that head fake we've seen so many times. Watch him now. He knows that he's going against two bigger players. That shot fake gets both of them in the air and he draws the foul. Smart play by Damon. Dorfield with his fourth foul. Thigpen is back in, replacing Chapel. Three-point play for Damon Bailey. He has five. Talk about timing. Damon Bailey has great timing, too, in a close ball game with the clock running down. He's a guy who can make big plays. 78-66, Indiana by 12. Out of bounds, who's ball? A little belong to the Cyclones. That's a, that is a tough pass. Collins really has rifle power on his passes. I think this is a team to be reckoned with in the Big Eight. They, of, of their first 17 games, 13 will be on the road, and I think that's hurt them so far. Turnabout by Alexander, but he'll go to the line. On the foul, Nover picks up his third. Well, they lose. Iowa State does just by a basket right at the end of the game to Iowa in an intrastate rivalry. They had Iowa most of that ball game down at Iowa yeah. City. A missed shot at the buzzer, but it was tipped in with two, two tenths of a second to go. And of course, Minnesota was able to beat Iowa State also. So this is the fourth Big Ten team that Iowa State has played. Of course, Johnny Orr loves to play against some of the uh, other Big Ten teams he used to play against when he was at Michigan. What do you think about this big guy? Is he pro prospect? I think so. He might have a little bit too much weight. We have a timeout, and we'll take the pause right now, 78-68, back after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Sports and Entertainment Network. Our next televised game will be next Thursday night, December 27th, a couple of nights after Christmas. 7 o'clock is the tip-off time. Marshall versus Indiana in the first game of the Hoosier Classic from Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Hope you can join us there, if not in person, on many of these same stations. Pressure. Indiana breaks it out. Good hands as Greg Graham saves the dribble. Gets it over to Nover. Nover gets the basket to fall and draws the foul. Indiana's done a great job against those full court presses. Looked like Graham was out of control, but when he busted through that trap, it gave Indiana the advantage offensively as Dorfield draws his fifth foul. He's out of the ball game, and uh, Victor Alexander will come back in. We were talking about Alexander's pro prospects. Uh, what would be the minuses to the way you'd have to play the game in the pros? I think his weight uh, can be a detriment. He's going to have to lose a little bit of weight, but uh, a lot of NBA scouts have watched him, and I think you'll see him in the NBA next year. Great save by Calvert Cheney on the missed free throw. Reynolds back up on his feet, punches down to Nover. Nover back to Cheney. Three and a half minutes. Well, this is where Indiana can run some clock now. Again, Nova backs it back up to let some time run off the clock. Cheney with good hands. He's fouled. He'll go to the line. And they're going to call that foul, I believe, on Norman Brown. That's his third. 80-68. Well, it certainly isn't the game that we saw last year, Laz. 115-66 at Assembly Hall. 
essentially the same two teams but i'll tell you something johnny or does an excellent job of bringing his players together and making them play as a unit i think they've done that tonight they really have it and he's kind of like indiana using these preseason games to play against good teams so that when the big eight starts his team is ready to go oklahoma looks like the favorite in that conference but i bet that iowa state is going to be right up there also it is 82 68 indiana by 14. look at alexander nover slides over good footwork there by Nover. and catches the ball out of bounds indiana ball indiana's defense seems to be picking up a little bit here late in the ball game let's look at the field goals for the game indiana 59 percent excellent Iowa State 45. Boy, I'll tell you something. Reynolds was undercut there. No foul as he gets his first basket. And Indiana walking away now. 84-68, 2.59 left to play. Big pin outside. Bailey playing about five feet off. Good pressure by Reynolds. Big pin. Collins. Collins backing down on Graham. Rifles it up again. He has a very flat shot, gets the basket, and draws the foul. That spin move is so difficult to guard against, but it's also difficult to make offensively and still get the good shot away. Coach Knight calls Graham over. Let's talk about that defense. You can't give up three-point plays this late in the ballgame. That's the first foul on Graham. And the sophomore trots back to take his position at the screen side on the right. He will get over and defend the shooter or block the shooter. Now with two and a half minutes remaining, Nover knocked out of his hands, picks it back up, no call. The officials have been very tolerant of a lot of things happening out there on the floor. Fans here wanted to travel. Indiana gets a chance to set up again. Graham. McCoy all over Reynolds. Now backed up by Graham. Bailey. Indiana with a high offense, Laz. Trying to run some time off that clock. This is a chance where you can use that back cut also, but not before a foul on Iowa State. Thick pin picks up his third, a pushing foul. One and one sends Indiana back to the line. Good look at Johnny Orr. Has an overall record through 25 and a few games, 11 games now into the 26th season of 401 and 298. That's very, very respectable. One of his assistants, by the way, Steve Prasisson, uh, former Big Ten player at Iowa in the early 80s, helping Johnny R on the bench. Greg Graham, 81% from the strike, sends the second up and misses that. Saved by McCoy, here they come. Blocked and taken away. Graham with good hand. Well, snuck right up from behind and right off the dribble, stole that ball. Jamal Meeks back in for some ball control for Indiana. This is where you've got to protect the ball, but you've also got to make those free throws because you know Iowa State's going to try for the steal. When they can't get it, they're going to go for the foul, and they come right back to foul Reynolds this time. Apparently, they've called that foul against Indiana, and they called it on Nover, and that's his fourth. Well, I didn't see that I didn't one. Mean. I thought that was going to go on Iowa State. Nover was trying to set a pick and got called. Pat Knight checks in the ball game now, and Calvert Chaney will leave. Haven't seen Pat for a couple of games. Pat is 6'6", son of Coach Bob Knight. Chaney sits down with 29 points, one point shy of his season high of 30. And he got 18 of those 29 here in the second half. And remember, Indiana had just a one-point lead, 38-37 at the half. Cheney does it again. Explodes in the second half, 18 points to lead Indiana. Looks like to a victory now with a 15-point lead, a minute 42 in the ballgame. Big pin. Can't get the first one to fall. Cheney had only four against Kentucky the first half, came back with 19. I think one of the things you're going to see, Chuck, is teams will obviously concentrate on Cheney, knowing they've got to stop him inside. And as the game wears on, though, he's able to get open more, the players look for him more, and he has better second halves, it seems, than he does in the first. Uh, quick drive by Reynolds, good adjustment. Here's a good reverse by Reynolds. He can't get it to fall, tipped up off the glass. Alexander recovers. Boy, Indiana had two efforts there. Reynolds with one, Meeks with the other. 
Big pin. Collins, oh, ball. Alexander in his mass just takes up the room and gives him the offensive board. He okay, moves around there real well inside. And he has his average. Knight, Reynolds, 56 seconds left. Indiana will chalk up its 10th win. They lead 85-72. And only one loss, and that loss to Syracuse in the championship game of the Maui Classic, and that's going to be a foul on Big Ben, his fourth. And we'll send Reynolds back to the line. Another hard-fought game by Indiana. They may get out-rebounded in today's ball game, but they sure have shot the ball well from the field. They've controlled their turnover some. But uh, Iowa State really gave a valiant effort here. But Indiana comes through again. Uh, seeing the Johnny Orr show on there reminds me to tell you that you can watch the Bob Knight show over many of these stations this coming Sunday. Check your local newspapers for the time. Next Sunday, the Bob Knight show. We'll have a lot to talk about. A couple of tough games last. Second shot by Reynolds. He has really improved his free throw shooting. Up now, two for two there, shooting 72% coming into this game. And a good week for Indiana. The, the big win against Kentucky at home. And then a, another good road win here at Iowa State. McCoy, no. They've only had one three-point shot drop. Pearson, back outside. Collins lets it fly. That's not going to go. Up, it will not go. Rebound. Up and in. Credit that basket to Donnell Bivens. In at that last dead ball opportunity. And we have a timeout. 19 seconds left on the clock. Indiana with the lead, 87-74, back after these messages. Who comes to mind when you... Capacity crowd tonight, 14,020 would fill the house in every seat. 13,916, that's not too bad considering the kids are off campus for the holidays, Lance. Yeah, the weather hasn't been real good out there, 34 below wind chill. <laughs> but it sure has been uh, warm in here. Indiana shooting well from the field, 87 points. Indiana's been averaging... Uh, about 15 points more than their opponents, and they're right at that now at 13 here against Iowa State. Reynolds gets the ball on the inbounds, tries to feed it up court, out of control. Here they come. Here comes Collins on the move on Meeks for two. And now Iowa State calls timeout. We have eight seconds, 8.7 seconds remaining. Well, as uh, our opportunity right now while we look at the Indiana bench and wait out this next minute or so to wish everyone out there a very, very happy uh, holiday season. Uh, for many, Hanukkah has just been completed, and for others, Christmas, of course, coming up next Tuesday. Wish to you and your family the very best of the seasons, and to everyone else listening to us, as uh, we will tell you now about our next televised game, which will be next Thursday night, Marshall versus Indiana. 7 o'clock tip-off from Market Square Arena in the first game of the Hoosier Classic. You can see Coach Knight uh, pretty angry with the team at, at that last time out. Iowa State was able to get an easy basket. And again, Indiana's uh, game plan is to play as well as you can, and obviously you're going to win some ball games. But even though the game's out of hand, the players still want to play well. Well, the player of the game is this fellow. We talk about him a lot, but he lit it up again. 11 points in the first half, 18 in the second for 29 points. Calbert Cheney, the sophomore out of Evansville. A great game tonight. Indiana once again setting offensively on the pressure on the inbounds and pressing on the inbounds is Pippet. And a jump ball tied up. That'll be... No, nope, called timeout. And Indiana see if called they're going to okay. the timeout. They are. Okay, a good, good smart play because Reynolds had lost his balance, was going to get called for a jump ball, which would have given it to Iowa State. A heads-up play and a difficult for a player to do because you have to hold the ball, but yeah. then still try to signal the timeout. And again, Indiana just did that to stop the clock, so the teams won't be able to huddle here. Indiana just wanted to stop the clock to avoid the turnover. Out of bounds again to Indiana. Meeks right in front of the bench, right in front of us. Will pass it in. Has to stay where he is. Looks for the man. Gets him. That's Reynolds. Reynolds 
Ross is going to work it out. He doesn't need to worry about that 10-second clock, and he does succeed in running time off the clock. So we've come to the end of the game. Johnny Orr has a word for the official. He is really incensed about something down here. But the final score of the game goes to Indiana. Our camera is following him over. He's going to come back over and talk to Bob Knight and shake hands with Coach Knight. There's the greeting by those two just in front of the Iowa State bench. Final score, Indiana 87, Iowa State 76. Back to wrap it up after these messages. <laughs>